This week on the show, we're featuring Morganite, Aquamarine under the microscope cab, an inability to speak on my half, Sawzall on why'd I buy that, 15 new jokes, and 100% grade C plus entertainment. What did Steve Urkel say after checking the interest in his investment portfolio? Did I accrue that? Let's start the show. Yes, Colette, Morganite is a peachy pink, as opposed to Kunzite, which is more of a reddy pink. Hello and welcome as I start the chatbot. Good news! I've finished the first batch of salsa and it is delish. I will be getting something in the mail for Mr. Weasley. I gotta get you something in the mail too, in the form of a necklace. I've been making these pendants. I gotta get you something cool. I gotta put you a ruby on a pendant. Derp. Totally doing it. Yep, that one that I shaped a little while back, probably do that one. Or maybe one of the other ones. Have to take a look. Maybe do a little bit different shape so it'll fit on the spoon properly. Then you can wear it. Won't that be fun? Peach color, yeah. Do you have any questions about Morganite? It's a pink emerald. There's also... Blue Emerald, which is called Aquamarine, which we will look at under the microscope cam shortly, because I'm going to shape one of them. Then there is Green Emerald, which is called Emerald. And then there is Clear, which reflects a white light. A very whitish light, too. Um, as far as, like, Quartz is more of a yellow-white, and Topaz is more of a blue-white. The... The white emerald is called Goshenite, with an H. So I try to say the H so it feels included. It, um, sort of-ish. It's on the softer end of the hard stones. The fact that it is cracked, or full of cracks, craggy, very chunkily, that makes it softer. Some of it is still crystal in formation. It doesn't have as solid of a bond. When we talk about crystal hardness, it's really more about the clean, clear portions of the crystal because that is properly formed. And the rest of it is just kind of getting there. Sharice, how's it going? What you up to? Doing things and stuff. Hope you're having a great week.
This is going to be a great week. I can just tell already. I can just tell already. Had a great start to it. Man. That was a great start. Don't get no better. Speaking of which, I sh saw a shooting star. Yeah, I saw a shooting star. And, okay, you know, I see them sometimes, you know, usually they're that little doomp in the sky where just this little white light goes by, this little short thing. I've seen a couple of them that are unique. I've seen the bigger ones. One of them went sideways across the sky. Turned kind of yellow and green. I was wondering if maybe it was some kind of airplane space poop. That'd probably turn a different color. Um, but I did. I saw one that was really cool. I'm going down the interstate, right? And I'm also finding the next video. You know, because things. And I see this uh, this light. It it looks like a star. <clears throat> it wasn't necessarily really big, right? But I see this this like you know the shooting stars. They usually go down or they go over. Or they're like the the big one. Biggest one I've seen was a sideways one. And this one actually it it kind of because they they start off and they just kind of get brighter and then brighter and then they die out. Well, this one, it started off low, and it got brighter and brighter and brighter, and then, you know, it went out when it was up. So it was a shooting star that went up. So I'm thinking about the way that the world is coming at me, and, and you know, the world's like this, and I'm driving, and the shooting star must have hit at such an angle that it up in the sky, in the atmosphere, that it went zoom, and it came down, but my view of it was up. Because the way I was looking, that was pretty cool. But last night, I saw one come straight down. And it, it, it got a little brighter and a little brighter, a little bigger and a little bigger. And then it turned yellow and then kind of greenish and it, it dropped. It's awesome. Made me wonder if maybe there's some Moldavite out there. Or some kind of uh, palisite Where it's metal. But it has all the peridot inside of it, and you slice it real thin and polish it, and you can see through the pal palisite is some cool stuff. Um, let's see, where is the microscopo cab? Nope, do not have it plugged in. That's probably a good idea. So I wanted to show the piece of Morganite that we shaped here, and then I wanted to show some Aquamarine because I want to shape this Aquamarine. And when I get ready to shape something kind of small, I want to make sure that... Where's it at? Got to restart the camera software. Nope. All right. Malfunctions in the show. Could be aliens. Could be little green aliens. Maybe that's why it was green. Could be little yellow aliens, and then they're firing up their green. But that would be red. Uh, but they wouldn't be blue. Just trying to throw another color in there. Sorry, guys. Well, what do we do about this? PC. Wi-Fi? No. Back to PC. DS5. Connected. USB camera. Net. Oh. Aw. Hmm. 
Okay, something about the way the wire is. I think maybe the wire's broke. There we go. Wire not broke no more. Maybe the way it's twisted is wrong. Okay, let me zoom out to the appropriate zoom distance ray. And here is the size of it. Could be a big, big, pretty big ring, you know, like a, a bracelet piece, something like that. Bing! It's kind of like an eyeball. Could be, could be a fake eyeball, you know. Boink. Aye. Um. My eye says hi. So here's the face of the Morganite. It's got the cracks, and if I keep sanding down, those will just those will just keep getting bigger because it's a craggly piece. the The polish is the scratches over on the left side of the screen. So those 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 swoopy lines, those are because I haven't polished it enough. Or maybe I've polished it enough and I could polish it more to get rid of them, but would it be relevant? And then this is the back side of the gem where I just kind of got rid of the stuff. I do need to do a little bit more polish work here. And these little end facets, trying to get them even and trying to get all of the lines straight is a matter of getting the tops together the bottoms together and when when you when you do the bottom this way then the line goes over this way and you can push the top this way and the line gets straight but then the the top sides of them are, are off and the bottom sides are off and you try to go back straight and so and here's the real problem sometimes one of them is so soft it just goes right down and the other side of it is real hard right there but it's soft on top and so when I put it on the, the wheel, it goes in like this. And then I put the other side on the wheel and it goes in at a different pressure. And so I've kind of got to come back. And what I've found, and this is why I haven't done it yet, is I can actually take my flat lap thousand when it's a fresh one, put it on a desk and go across and I can actually adjust the pressure and go inch by inch, take a look, little by little, because the machine is is so off balance that it just the wheel is going like this, and so when I put you 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 can see when I put the stone on the wheel, the stone becomes blurry, and so to make small adjustments like this side of the top of this versus this side of the top of this, it becomes a little bit difficult with the blurriness. But I can still get the bulk of the shape in there. And that's how it kind of, you know, brings around the bulk of the gem. Aquamarine! I got two pieces going on. Two of them. One, two. This one I kind of did close to the finished. I like the bubbles. Look at the bubbles. It's so bubbly. It's like blowing bubbles. But also, the facetry of the gem so close to being done that I, I can put this on a dop and just kind of finish it out straighten it up finish it out and we'll have those little bubblegum bubbles in a ring so sparkly could fall apart though too because the cracks but I think actually I'm feeling pretty good about it I mean when you get down to it or up to it since we're on the microscopic cam well, you can see the difference between the pits from the chip out during the, the scratch and then those big like long swoopy pit lines those are from the thousand and then if you look at the actual texture uh, like the swoopy lines are kind of going this way and then the texture is more this way that's from the 2000 grit polish and so that is what you would have to sand out with like your 8,000 grit. But actually, I, I still need to go down deeper with the 2,000 to get rid of what is that orange peel or the pits. 
that's how that the depth of the pits is how deep I need to go with the 2000 or really rather more like the 1000 cerium or maybe like a 4000 diamond would get rid of that but beyond that one big crack kind of in the middle all those littler cracks those are actually not real big concerns in terms of the gem like falling apart it's just kind of more the other lines that are in it there those are like healing lines they're they were cracks and they're like forming together so there is a bond strength among them but it's it's not the full strength of the crystal in terms of hardness still i'm excited i think that's going to be a neat piece but this is the other one because this one this one's a little bit different of, or of a color it's more way more aquamarine colored because this one's pretty white you know it's got a little bit of the blue it's got the bubbles the bubbles this one is actual aquamarine color i was wondering if there's enough clarity inside of it to get in there and actually make a gem so if i look at the gem i've got like this tri shape and if we have to get rid of a wing of it, we could still get away with, you know, coming in on each of the corners and making it around a brilliant, you know, something like that. Maybe a hexagonal shape. So then I got to look at depth and I flip it up and I say, how deep are we? Yeah, there's room. There's room. We could we could make something out of this. Uh, there There looks to be a problem over here. So we'll have to get rid of that. I mean, you can see the color difference. Somewhere around there. But then I wonder, you know, where are those cracks? Is there a real big crack in the middle? I can kind of see a little bit from this colloid. And the colloid, uh, colloidal layer, or... Co I'm probably saying that wrong. The C-shaped area. The word starts with a C. That kind of gives me an idea of the crystal structure flowing out that way. I mean, not necessarily in a direction, but in that it's a solid piece. That's why it made a solid C shape. And then it stops in the middle. That's why it's not. So it kind of worries me, but it's it does have a bit of a peak there. I don't know. Th this is at the point where, and, and uh, since it's aquamarine and it's gray color, I want to take it slow and I want to examine it first. Then we're at the first stage where I'll grind down all the flat sides and then I'll come back and I'll look at it again and I'll decide the final shape and we'll remove any big areas and kind of get closer to the final facets so that we can straighten it up and polish. And hopefully it'll turn out and we can make this into a feature. Feature gemstone. We'll see. I don't think it necessarily has any, like, um inclusions in particular um i mean it, i i don't when i think of inclusion there's a lot of different words for inclusion it turned out big it's a beautiful color thank you the rainbow right the bubbles have you tried using very very fine polished powders like two hundred thousand uh, zircon, zir z zinc aluminum oxides, or even diamond grit to see what it actually looks like when polished that fine. No, I haven't. Um, I don't really have the cash to throw at that. Because it's experimental. And the gems don't really make me any money. And it, it, can, it can be a lot, of, a lot of cash. Hundreds of dollars to throw at that stuff, right? And so I'm like, well... I, but I do have something that I can show you if I can find it. Because I did, I was, like, I was trying to experiment with, like, trying to make some final gemstones. Like, like I've got, uh, you know, I've got some brilliant stones and stuff like that. But, uh, made it myself. I, I was trying to work on my own faceter and that was actually polished with a copper lap that has like a divot in it and so it's it's kind of like 
it, it puts big scratches and things with large facets. A small brilliant like that I can I can shape around, but I actually did that with dops I made myself, and the dops are from an aluminum rod, and it it just has just the slightest the slightest not straightness because it wasn't turned. And uh, so I'm, I I got I got some brass dops, and so th I've been doing things that are straighter, and I got one polish lap, one tin zinc top lap, something like that. And uh, the point I'm getting to while I try to buy time to find this thing is that I took a piece of peridot and I put it on the top with some 8,000 grit diamond paste. So that would be the finest I've gotten so far. Let's look at it under the microscope cam before we get to the white eye by that. This is, I think, isn't it? The 8,000 grit piece? Nah, that can't be it. Look at those nasty scratches. Maybe I, maybe I redid it or something. Or maybe it was a different piece. Cause those, that's that's that doesn't look like eight thousand at all. That can't be eight thousand. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to find it because that one doesn't look like the one. Yeah, there's something wrong. That one, that one's not it. I'll find it and we'll show it on uh on the next uh on next week's show. I'll find I'll find a couple of things that I've done with the 8000 grit polish cuz like I did um let's see I I got a couple like uh I did this topaz but I think I did this and then this amethyst I actually did these while they were on the fastening top. I tore off pieces of sandpaper and put it down flat on the master lap and polished it without the master lap spinning by hand. And I, I mean, you know, they're, they're not, this one got a chip in it. I was trying to do some stuff to the top of it afterwards and it, it caught and flew. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are looking at it at like a, an 800x magnification. Excuses, excuses, Jacob. And then I got this piece of topaz, which I'm working on trying to finish out. And it actually, I've only done it with the 2000 grit cerium. And it needs, yeah, it needs some loving. I need to take the time to straighten it. It was just kind of a hurry up because I want to cut something fun because I was sad. I didn't even record it. Didn't even record it. Just did it by hand in a matter of like, you know, 15 minutes. I was like, I need I need, I need to cut a gem. Uh but uh Nice aquamarine. Thanks, Colette. We'll see how it turns out. I think it will. I think it's going to turn out. I will mail it. Thank Oh, cool. I bought a kilo of each because it's only way I could get that fine. So I have a lifetime supply. Oh, yeah, because I was wondering about like 200,000. That's so fine. <laughs> that's so, I mean, that's like, you've got to keep things in bags and watch out for dust. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, I can't imagine the, the polish level. But being able to, you know, look at it under the scope cam, that's, that's one of the cool things. Um... Absolutely, David. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad you made it to the show. Uh, let's see. I, I've got the wrong white eye by that, though. I have to come to downloads. And then desktop. Okay, and then product slideshow. Then we take these out. And then we go back to the product slideshow. We reload it. Minus. Plus. Done. 
So I bought a saw blade. I don't really have a whole lot of uh <clears throat> don't sneeze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you'll be sneezing a lot more. That would just that's called perpetual sneeze sneezery. I I don't remember what I was cutting. I was cutting something. I needed a saw blade. But what I do remember is that I was cutting something metal, so I bought the very, very fine teeth. And I wanted it to go well. It was important, so I bought a new blade. Because they, they do tend to last quite a while. And I wanted to be able to use either the front or the back or the middle of the blade, whichever I, I needed or wanted. I wanted it all to be, you know, new. And it was just one thing, like one bolt or something like that. So I, I, I was okay with one blade. And I wanted to get kind of the better end blade. Because I, I have tried the, the better ones, the best ones, and the store brand. And the the in-between ones are usually about the best. Because the, even the best ones, they get dull. And even the store brought the store bought brand ones, they they'll get you by, but they're they're already dull. they're like pre dulled, and so the the middle grade is usually what I go price wise. That's what works. Fighting back again. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys these things here. What do we got? Uh, Kachinga and. Kachanga. Hey, Benny Loco's got some cheese. She's slicing it up. I love sliced cheese. But yeah, you got to be careful when you're cutting the cheese. Um, actually, Benny, I was making salsa, and when I cut onions, I have glass uh, safety glasses on because they kind of keep a lot of the fumes from getting in the old eyes. I also use the nitro gloves because, I mean, one, the nitro gloves, they keep all the oils off, off your hands, right? But one, I can wash them so fast. You just water on, wash, water off. And you got, like, all the tomato stuff, all the pepper juice, whatever you got going on. And then you can go and do whatever else you're, you're working on. Get dishes out of the cupboards without getting the, the sugary juice all over. Oh, yeah. Which, it is salsa time. I have finished my first batch of salsa. I'm getting Mr. Weasley's in the mail. I gotta get Josh a jar. And, um... <clears throat> I'm gonna see how much I get out of my second batch. And if my second batch is as good as this batch, I'm gonna try and do a contest. Then give away a jar of salsa. Like I give away my money for a new saw blade. Which is what I bought. Have you ever bought a saw blade? Which There's a lot of them to choose from. Which one did you buy and why did you buy that? The color of the blade had nothing to do with it. It really has nothing to do with it. They get the, they're, they're, they're hard to find anyway. They're like socks in the dryer. Um, what do I have? Grin and Barrett. Oh, Benny, you are such a hottie. <laughs> um, that's so wrong. Where are we at? That's because it's the joke portion of the program. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have a whole lot for you this week. I wanted to go through some of that stuff and then go into my set list I did the other night at the theater. Uh, I don't know how to dress myself. I just buy clothes and then put them on. It was funny when I was drinking. That should be the name of my podcast. What did Steve Urkel say after checking the interest in his investment portfolio? Did I accrue that? I still spell picnic like Yogi the Bear. Um, I, oh, I got some 50-pound dumbbells, and dude, they're so big. They're, they're, they're awesome. Just owning them makes me feel more broly. Which is a good thing, because actually lifting them is impossible. Yeah, just, just buying the weights and then feeling struck. Actually, actually, I like, I like them a lot, because I was able to do the, the fist pump in the air twice with each of them. 
and I've been using them for curls and then shoulder shrugs and stuff. And I haven't had them long. That's why I'm not massive. But, you know, I'm working on I'm work, Hey, I'm working here. Is there anything more pathetic, lonely, or desperate than checking Tinder on Sunday morning? Oh, wait, it's Sunday. I should be checking Christian Mingle. I tend to create a lot of steps. Does that make me a stepdad? Um, somebody said that they got ghosted on a dating app, and I said, uh, what do you mean, what's ghosting? And they told me that ghosting is when someone just stops responding. And I said, oh, I thought I was the ghost because I scare girls away. Which reminds me, I have a, a Tinder profile pic where I'm posing with some of my signature cinnamon rolls to prove that I'm a good role model. Um... But uh, I also have a picture where I'm holding a fish. And it's a largemouth bass so that the caption can read, Your mouth must be at least this big. Uh, I should have wrote more of this joke down. I realize I'm getting old because I put ice in my soda pop. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doping my sugar with water. It's... It's like it's I'm trying to actually drink water and I didn't want that when I was a kid. When I was a kid I wanted like to take more of the water out of the Mountain Dew. I wanted, you know, something very syrupy. I wanted to just kind of pour it on every I really I wanted a solid block of Mountain Dew that I could chop up and snort. If I pick out clothes should have told this one earlier. If I pick out clothes, I have to describe my style as eclectic oh i tried to pick up a chick yeah i told her that i had an unchecked lottery ticket at home you never know it didn't 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 go very well. um so the the let's see the host this is my set the host usually introduces the comedian right please welcome your next comedian jacob and so um like, I say, uh, like the host said, my name is Jake. Um, some people ask me if it's Jake or Jacob. My psychiatrist says it's both. Which, recently, I got off my medication. And I thought it was a good thing, but now I'm having strong political opinions, and I don't have anything to blame it on. Speaking of political opinions, somebody mentioned they went on a family vacation. With their entire extended family. I'm like, oh, wow, what is that like? Oh, wait, we have that around here. It's called a family get-together. Because that's about all the amount of time that we can stand to be around each other. Uh, somebody tried to rob me. Uh, this, is, this is part of the set, so a couple of these are older jokes. Somebody tried to rob me. They, uh, they said, give me your wallet. I said, I don't have one. They said, I'm going to take your wallet or I'm going to take your life. I said I don't have one of those either. Which, really, things are getting so depressingly bad. I, I've been thinking about getting death insurance. Not life insurance, but death insurance. Because at this point, I'm not sure it's actually going to happen. And I thought about suicide, you know. But I, I want people to be sad when I'm gone. So that means I'm going to have to get in shape first. And that's just too much work. I did use a Ouija board, but it told me to clean my windows. It turns out it was a squeegee board. So I'm looking at things that cheer me up, you know, like sandwiches. Who doesn't love a good sandwich, right? That's why Subway is introducing the new Ocean Gate Submarine Sandwich. It comes with five different types of meat, a really thin tortilla wrap, and an overload of sea salt. For a limited time, available to those who arrive too soon. Uh, you gotta be careful though with sandwiches. It's easy to overeat, right? Kind of like uh, mosquitoes. They're always overeat. I, that's the thing. I don't like mosquitoes. They're trying to eat me, but American mosquitoes are the worst because they're they're like overeating mosquitoes. It's I I really I'm thinking that maybe they just need to be encouraged to go on a diet. That's why I've decided I'm gonna play Richard Simmons really loud as I enjoy the outdoors. Uh, speaking of outdoors, there's plants outdoors. 
so I brought them indoors so that I don't I, I can enjoy the outdoors without actually having to be there. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea because I, I tend to punish the plants. It's like a long, slow punishment of death in the plants, but uh, I, I'm determined, you know, so I'm going to I'm going to keep at it. I'm just I'm going to start wearing a leather gimp suit while I water the plants so that they know what's going on. I think I got to stick more with the punishment side to get to the game. OK. Um, but then, of course, then I got the 22 gemstones, plant food and everything's fine. Uh, which somebody asked me recently, well, what was the latest thing I read? And I, well, I read a sign, sign everywhere, everywhere, a sign. There's signs everywhere, right? But the, the I don't know, I, I, I read a book. You know, the cover, not the pages, just the cover. Um, but it was it was a good experience. So I'm thinking about reading some more. I I thought about reading more of the book, but uh, I don't know. I probably should. I should give it the benefit of the doubt. But I don't even understand the benefit of the doubt. It's like the the doubt is always the bad part. You know, it's a problem when there's doubt. It's like, yeah, I was going to read the book, but I was having doubts, so I had to give it the deficit of the doubt. You know, I, like, I wanted to continue telling you jokes, but I, I, sorry, I just, I doubt the rest of the jokes, so I have to give you the deficit of the doubt. But that's all right, I'll be back next week with, I, I actually already have more jokes, I just need to organize them. So that I can tell you without fumbling around during what is that every show called the joke portion of the program. We made it. We made it. Yeah, we made it. You know who else made it? Buds and Hazard. You guys are so awesome. Buds and Hazard made it. Benny Loco made it. Man, I haven't seen you guys in so long. I got. I love doing this show. And David made it to the show. And Colette and Sharice. And so, oh man, I, I can't forget. Fighting Evil Genius Genetics made it to the show. So glad to see you guys. Hey, Eggs made it. Oh, how'd I miss that? Oh, anyway, how do I need to enter for the giveaway? Oh, Egg X, um... I don't know. Uh, man. I Well, I mean, basically be here. It'd be a couple of weeks from now. Um, that's why I suck is because I'm, I'm supposed to be live like two hours ago for a 45-minute show. I, and I love you guys so much. But, um, all right, let me, let me write this down. Egg X... Three weeks give away for the salsa and a gemstone too and some plant food. I like to load it up. Anyways, yes, that you are all fantastic. This is going to be such a great week. It's going to be awesome, wonderful, and amazing because you're going to make it that way because you have the ability because you're great like that. I'll see you next time.